Hello, hello, it's Stamfet here. Here's another item on number theory. x and y are non-negative integers, such that the following equation is true. x cubed minus 6x squared plus 12x plus 27y cubed minus 224 equals 0. That's a mouthful. And we're asked to solve for all possible ordered pairs x comma y. As usual, pause this video if you'd like to give this item a try. But if you're done, let us dive into the solution to this question. All right, so let's try to make some primary observations before we do anything else. Now, all right, let's try to take a look here. And what I immediately notice is that there is a lot of cubes. Now, the 27y cube, that's a very obvious cube. That's just 3y, the, the cube of 3y. And then here we have a bunch of x's, but the leading or like the largest um, degree is the x cubed term, so I can send something, maybe a like sum of cubes scenario. So I, I got interested in the x cubed minus 6x squared plus 12x part. And right, not, not really a typical thing that we do, but maybe it is possible to complete this cube because I mean, it is in terms of x cubed, and there are like terms that follows it. And well, it kind of looks like um, something in this format, something in this format for like in the form like x, uh, sorry, a minus b cubed. So it looks something like this. And then it kind of motivate, motivates me to try if b equals 2. Now, indeed, if you try b equals 2, if b was equal to 2 based from like a nice guess, again, I just kind of guessed based from uh, the terms here, but if you try b equals 2, um, you're really gonna, oops, you're really gonna get a cubed minus, well this becomes like minus 6a squared, this becomes like positive 12a, and the minus 8. So I guess we can kind of make the nice conclusion that indeed, I guess we can kind of complete the cube here just by doing a minus 8. And that's going to be the thing here, because maybe there will be something nice because it is something in terms of like sum of cubes maybe that's the intended solution to the question all right so now that we observe that it is kind of related let's try to complete the cube here x cubed minus 6x squared plus 12x minus 8 so i just extracted whoops i just extracted a minus 8 from this minus 224 and then leaving us with uh, minus 216 here now 216 that's an oddly familiar number it's actually 6 cubed so what I did here is what I'm going to make this x minus 2 cubed, so completing the cube. We have another cube here from the 27y uh, cube, and then we're going to put this negative 216 on the other side, and then that's going to be equal to 6 cubed. All right, so as intended from the question, we have a sum of cubes equal to a number of cubes scenario. All right, um, it's not very often that we see a lot of sum of cubes equal to the cube of another integer scenario and we are we kind of recall a nice theorem on sum of powers so this kind of looks like the format um, a cube plus b cube equals c cube which is something related to this and it's actually the Fermat's last theorem now it's kind of weird that we're using the Fermat's last theorem because the Fermat's last theorem tell us about having no solutions, but I mean, we don't have, we, we have, we don't, we should never forget like the statement of the Fermat's last theorem. And that is, that tells us that there are no positive integer triples, A, B, C, to the solution A cube plus B cube equals C cube. So that's the rule. There are no positive integer solutions. I guess it kind of makes sense. If B was zero, then A could equal C, right? or like a, uh, b could equal to negative a, and then c would be zero. So I guess it is nice to, for us to remember, oh yeah, we, we shouldn't forget the description, or oh, sorry, the statement of the theorem. Now, there are no positive integer triples. So I think there would be no solutions if, I mean, since six here is already positive, so we don't really have to do, worry about that, but um, we just have to consider uh, the 3y not being positive, and then the x minus 2 not being positive to find all the possible solutions. So what we have to do is just the following, because we know that by Fermat's last theorem, these two cannot be both positive. So these two cannot be both positive. So I guess we should just take cases here. So we should just have at least one of these two being non-negative, uh, being less than or equal to zero. 
So we just have x minus 2 less than or equal to 0, or uh, the 3y less than or equal to 0. Now we have a restriction for x and y, which, uh, which, is, which was uh, x and y must be non-negative integers. So we just have to solve for x and y respectively. So x is equal to 0, 1, or, uh, 0, 1 and 2, y is equal to 0. Again, it's an or scenario, so we have to check for all four of these and to see if we get like a value or like a pair of solutions for the question. All right, so after using the Fermat's last theorem, it's just checking finitely many cases, which is pretty nice. All right, so let's try the y equals zero case. Now if y equals zero, well, just imagine this not being here anymore. So x minus two cubed, it's gonna give us six cubed. So I think it's pretty obvious for us to say x minus two would equal six, and that's gonna give us x equals eight. All right, so apparently eight zero is a solution. And let's try to check if x equals 0, oh actually, if x equals 0 and x equals 1, I'm pretty sure that there are no solutions. Now why is that the case? Because, well we have a multiple of 3 here, it is 3y cubed, so this is a multiple of 3, well 6 cubed, well 6 is divisible by 3, so 6 cubed is obviously divisible by 3, so we can just use the kind of mod 3 or just the multiple of 3 idea, and to say that I'm pretty sure this x minus 2 cubed must also be a multiple of 3. But if x is 0 and x equals 1, take a look at this x minus 2 cubed term. If x equals 0, um, the x minus 2 cubed um, it's going to become negative 8. So negative 2 cubed, so obviously not a multiple of 3, so I'm pretty sure there wouldn't be any solutions here just because it is it doesn't satisfy or doesn't, um, it's not going to allow that kind of things, uh, kind of solutions under mod 3 technically, checking the multiples of 3. And same can be said for x equals 1, because if I substitute 1 in this x minus 2 cubed, that's going to be negative 1 cubed, so that's going to give us obviously negative 1. Again, same reasoning, it's not divisible by 3, so I don't think we're going to, we are able to get a solution just because everything fails um, just by taking a look at mod 3. So, all right, last thing to check is x equals 2. And I think that's pretty similar to the y equals 0 case, because if x equals 2, it's just this being gone. So we can just kind of um, solve for y. So 3y must equal 6 then. So y would have to be equal to 2, because 3y equals 6, so y equals 2. So all right, apparently just by checking these four values, which are the, which are the only possible values of um, y and x. So we have two pairs. So apparently we're going to have the following ordered pairs as the solution. So x comma y, possible ordered pairs are 2, 2 and 8, 0. And these two are the only possible solutions to the question. And this will be our final answer. Hopefully you guys learned something new from this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!